Good afternoon, Dingo Scripto. We have a very exciting episode for you today. We're going to be going over hack of finance. It's been going, people have been talking about it in uh, DeFi communities lately, and everybody seems to want to learn about their black hole swap. So I went ahead, and here's the video. I hope this helps you understand why black hole swap is different from curve and uniswap, but let's just jump right into it. First and foremost, subscribe. Go down there, subscribe right now, and on the way up, hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now jump into price action real quick, just because it's in, everybody's kind of in it for the money to a degree. Let's just be real. So we're at 10 cents. We went down to 2 cents early November. Um, 14 million market cap. Hack a finance token. <sighs> I will just be straight up with you guys. The only utility I've noticed is governing and yield farming with it. Is there more? Maybe in the future. But that's all I have noticed so far. But their black hole swap product is, is exciting. So Uniswap, they just have liquidity pools not too far. They, they are not too deep of liquidity, right? Balancer has multi uh, different ratio collateral factors, right? And then Curve. <clears throat> is like Uniswap with leverage, right? And Black Hole Swap is using DeFi lending protocols. So, but these two only stable coins. Uh, Curve's white paper did say that it was possible to do with, um, it was possible to do it with uh, appreciating assets or uh, volatile assets. You just have to constantly change the price, but that's something maybe in the future. Who knows? Who knows? DeFi is growing exponentially. New products are going to come out. New products are going to fail. They're going to experiment and see what works best. And that's what's going to happen. But let's jump into. So this is Curve's white paper. Basically, this is a. This is. So they just changed Uniswap's curve. This is their liquidity curve and slippage. And it is, it's just Uniswap on leverage, guys. Plain and simple. Now let's jump into. So this is the same chart. No, it's not. But the pink dotted line is Uniswap, and that's curve is the blue one, and black hole swap is this straight line. And they're able to do that. So the, their only stable coin, their only stable coins, uh, they only have stable coin pools. Sorry, and basically everybody's fighting to get as close to one to one as possible. Right, because you want to get exactly one to one for stable coins, and as you say, as you can see, if like say there's volatility in stable coins, curve finance, there's slippage, and actually it goes down drastically. And then the way black hole swap is able to do this is because they are using a lending protocol. I'm not going to get into the weeds of it because that's not what this video is about. But um, they are using lending protocols, and then they they they're going to be adding. Right now, if you deposit, it is three point four three percent plus one point seven one compound, which is the compound token governance. They're going to liquidate it and put it back into the deposit, the interest bearing pool. Right. So keep that in mind. Right now, I mean, you can swap. Die to USD or USDC to a die, right? And then on curve, you can do the same, but look at all the different pools on curve. So I guess we're kind of comparing black hole swap to curve today, but they're they're direct competitors, or they're just uh, I mean, they're just trying to make the best product for the customer, right? So, so as you can see, oh, where's the liquidity? Damn, they did have the volume down here. Oh, there it is. Okay, deposits. There's one billion dollars in deposits, right? And then 82 mil in daily volume. And this can very well be applied to black hole swap if it's successful. Let's keep that in mind. If it's successful, and also, <clears throat> also you can have these liquidity pools. You these liquidity pools are past possible with any stable uh, asset like C DI, C DI, and C USDC, right? So. So you can deposit that and earn a little bit of interest. Okay, so understand that. And then a big topic is flash loans and arbitrage because when you get something more efficient, it 
allows opportunities to do arbitrage. So just keep that in mind. Furrowcomb is kind of a cool little furrow combo. Sorry. It's kind of a cool little protocol. I like using it just for fun. I never do arbitrage opportunities on here because it's nearly impossible to find some. But it's just a good way to imagine arbitrage. You buy an asset here. You go, well, you take out a flash loan, borrow, trade an asset, trade another asset and repay the flash loan in one transaction. Very, very cool. But that's all for black hole swap. It is, it is looking better possibly than curve, but implementing this is another thing than just writing a white paper and simulating it, right? So we'll see what happens when it's implemented and if it can be implemented successfully, I would like to see that happen. But stable, more efficient stablecoin transfers are a very important part of DeFi, believe it or not. I know it's boring, but it is. And then 3F Mutual is just uh, insurance on, on MakerDAO. That's basically it. It's been doing well with volume. Um, but I have something really funny to show you at the end of this video. Very funny. I, I don't know if it's funny or weird, but <laughs> you can decide that for yourself. So we're going to go in there. Uh, so, yeah, they're just talking about the use case of the token governance. Here's their yield farming uh, farm, right? So 211, 147, balancer, balancer. I mean, you can yield farm their token if you want. That's up to you. But here's their governance where you can vote on. So really governance and yield farming, guys. Value that as you want to. You can speculate on the token, but if you don't hold it long term, if you don't, Find the fundamental value, which is governance and yield farming, and determine the, the intrinsic, va intrinsic value of this token, and and then hold it if you want to hold it. And if it's undervalued, it's undervalued. I'm, if, I'm not a trader. You might be right if you buy it now and it's spe people start speculating on these DeFi projects and it goes up in value, but I don't do that. Um, here's the DeFi handbook. It was a nice little thing they did. Um, but let's move on. This is 3F Mutual's interface. Um, and let's, okay, their information access. So here's all their links right here. But um, let's go on to their team. Their team looks pretty good, guys. So, I mean, it looks, looks well tenured. Um, Obviously, they've been into like their cypherpunks in Taiwan. They're a different country, I think, of Taiwan, obviously. But one thing that blew me away, ready ready for this? What the? They're a Discord. It says CEO food. What the hell? <laughs> what, are we, what are we looking at? What? Huh? I don't know. But is that funny or weird? I think it's a little weird, guys. Personally, like, why do you have a tab in your Discord called CEO Food? A little weird. I personally, I'll, I'll be transparent. I will not be buying Hack of Finance because Hack of Finance is, uh, there's no, there. the only thing used for their token is governance and yield farming. And I want more out of my tokens. I don't. Uh, it's not essential infrastructure of DeFi, and I don't trade on speculation, so I won't be holding it. I, even though their if their black hole swap product comes out and is successful, which it looks like it will be, because it's better than Curve in a couple aspects, but it's also riskier than Curve in a couple aspects. So give or take. Sorry for not a definitive answer, other than I am not purchasing it or holding it, but. Other than that, I hope you have a great day. I hope you learned something out of this episode and peace out till next time.